Hill, Hall of Famer Maya S.B. Wood, all-time North Carolina <laughs> Tar Heel legend. This guy's starting up already. That's all right. My five-year-old son was in here before, and he said, uh, what is his name again? Brendan? He said, how'd you grow so fast? <laughs> hey, listen, man, I told him, and I, hey, being the good role model I am, I told him I ate my vegetables. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, uh, the Celtics and Jalen Brown have been eating plenty of their vegetables, and I don't know how many vegetables are going to help what's going on with the Pacers, because without Victor Oladipo, as great as Nate has done, he's done such a fantastic job. There's just not really enough there to match with the horses the Celtics bring in, especially when you say, down the list, down the list, down the list, Jalen Brown, and that's the guy who just seemed to really be the most effective on the floor tonight. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the, the margin of error is so slim for Indiana, you know, without all the people, without their closer. And like you said, Jalen Brown, one of the many weapons that Boston has, there's a reason why they were picked to be so good this year. Maybe kind of didn't play great throughout the regular season, but they're turning it on at the right time. And Jalen Brown had big moments last year in the postseason. Mm -hmm. Young player having big moments, at least here in, in game three. You know, Brendan, that was the question, right? It was like, okay, all of their roles have changed. Have people kind of gotten into it? But in this series, we've seen it. We saw it today. Gordon Hayward makes a big shot on, on a second shot attempt. Kyrie had some huge plays in this game. Jalen Brown had some big shots. Tatum in the first two games in this series, huge in the second half. I know it's only three days, but how much better in these three games now that they're over with do you feel about the Celtics moving forward compared to some of that topsy-turvy stuff we saw during the season? Well, the last three days, I mean, these last three games yeah. haven't really changed my opinion of the Celtics in that I don't really know who they are still. Like, every time I got comfortable with the Celtics during this course of the regular season, then some more turmoil would hit or they wouldn't mm -hmm. be playing at their best. And this series, especially a series without Victor Oladipo, hasn't taught me any more about the Celtics. I learn a lot more about the Celtics when they take on what we think will be the Milwaukee Bucks in the next series. And that's the series where I'll learn about how good is this team. Because when you know the other team really is, is inferior, you know that as a player. And so, you know, it's, not, it's a lot less pressure on you. But when you take on a team like Milwaukee that has a player the caliber of Giannis and Middleton, uh, it's going to be a different type of pressure for these Boston Celtics. And I want to see if they're going to come together and rally around each other or if they're going to splinter like they have at times this season. Let me follow with that, though, for both of you. Have we at least been impressed by – and look, the Pacers made some mistakes down the stretch in game two. It wasn't like it wasn't partially on their shoulders. They could have won that game. But to your point, the Celtics have been very up and down. Consistency hasn't been their thing. Thing. They haven't been great every minute of every quarter, but they have beaten the team they're supposed to beat three times in a row, taking care of business, if you will. Does that say something for a team that really, even against some bad teams during the year, way worse than the Pacers, had some outings where you didn't understand what you were watching? You know, I mean, obviously, yeah, you win three in a row, that, that, that's a good thing. Um, I was expecting, particularly in the first two games, you know, kind of like what we saw the other night with Golden State in L.A. You know, dominance. Where, just a dominance where they come out and they – and I know Indiana's a really good defensive team, uh, but they, they don't have – I mean, they don't have a guy in Oladipo who can go out and get 25, 35, 40 points, who can make big plays. We've seen them do it all last season in the postseason. Um, they've just been okay. Like, they've been good, and they've done well enough to win. Uh, they were down in game two at home. Mm -hmm. You know, Kyrie uh, obviously went, went went off there at the end of the game in the, in, in the fourth quarter. But they just haven't had that game where you're like, wow, okay. Or those series of games where you're thinking, okay, you know what? They have turned the corner. They are sending a message. They are clicking on all cylinders. Because like Brendan said, I mean, you know, as good as this Indiana team is and as great as they've been coached, if Milwaukee were playing them right now, I think Milwaukee would at least have one of those games out of three where they would just really take it to them and, uh, and have a big sort of impressive victory. So I'm with Brendan. I, 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 don't, I don't know who this team is. Remains to be seen. Remains yeah. to be seen. I mean, I think they get out of this series. Right. right. She, TBD. Okay. There you go. All right. TBD. Uh, uh, look, Indiana. Coach of the year this year, I think there are more conversations and sales pitches for why, whether it's Doc Rivers or Brandon Malone or, or Mike Malone. You think about uh, Coach Bud, I think Kenny Atkinson. There are so many different guys who have done a great job. But Nate has kept this team afloat when really they're dealing with a supporting cast. But to have Bogdanovich, Brendan, be the guy in game one and two seemingly. Tyreek Evans was big in the first half tonight, but hasn't had the kind of year maybe expected. Collison for a couple of minutes. How does a team find a way? to win that way. We'll talk about that on the other side of hearing this. Brad Stevens. Joseph Pavone, WEEI, and CLNS Media. Brad, just talk about uh, Jalen Brown's performance and what impressed you the most about him tonight. Obviously really shot the ball well. 
Um, you know, didn't force anything that wasn't there. I mean, the only shot he missed was that end of the shot clock. Great challenge by Miles Turner in front of our bench. Um, and then obviously rebounded, and he's got to guard Bogdanovich, which is a heck of a task. So, thought he thought he played a good game. Shrub Blakely, NBC Sports Boston coach. Uh, for the second straight game at the start of the fourth quarter with Kyrie on the bench, you guys were able to really cut into whatever deficit or at least get some traction. How important has it been for that second unit, particularly at the start of the fourth, to really kind of get into a flow and position you guys for some of those plays? We actually played better than we scored in those moments. I thought we got some great looks that we missed, um, moving the ball and, and kicking it out and making the right play and, and those type of things. But. Um, those guys have played in a lot of big games, and um, you know we've got a lot of faith in them. And you know we're, we're trying to rotate Al back in with that group. Doesn't always happen that way, depending on how the like the first quarter that stint went a little long. But um, we certainly are capable, and and Terry's done a really good job of kind of organizing us and getting us in the right spots. And then everybody's made the right plays. Hope, hopefully, we we shoot it a little bit better on those on those open ones in those moments. Coach John Herrick, uh, WIBC Radio in Indianapolis. Uh, in the second quarter, they make a big run, take a two-point lead. But in the third quarter, you hold them to 12 points. What do you guys think allowed you to play a much better third quarter to kind of take control of the game again? Oh, I, you know, I think they'll go back and look at it. We'll go back and look at it. I don't know if it was as good a defense as they just missed some open shots probably. Um, but, uh, you know, that's one of the things you just got to keep going in these games. I mean, whatever we were up in the first half doesn't matter. And it just doesn't matter. It's th those leads dissipate so quickly. You just have to keep playing the next play. And we try to challenge them as well as we can. But um, you know, they they run good stuff and they run it hard. Um, and so they were open on some of those misses, and we defended them well on some of the others. Coach Beck left. Uh, just building off of what you just said, but kind of a strange game. You grab a big lead early, they come back and take a lead, and the crowd is into it. Just what does it do for a team, and what type of metal does it build when you can battle against that adversity and grab a win on the road in the postseason like you did tonight? It's a long game, like I said, and and the one thing that you know um, we do have some experience on the road. We weren't great last year, and we've talked about that a lot. We weren't great in game threes, but we were ready to play this one, and um, um, you know they were also ready, and and we made a bunch of shots and felt better about ourselves than we were probably playing in the first quarter. And then, um, you know, they came back and took the lead. The crowd was awesome, as you would expect. And, um, you know, that, at that point in time, you just hit singles until the end. And that's what we tried to do. And then, you know, I thought Kyrie made enormous plays late. Al made some big shots. Gordon's tip in. Everybody contributed. Jason Tatum made some big plays. Everybody contributed. Brad, uh, Gary Washington, Boston Globe. You've been hard on your defense this year. You haven't been as pleased and said it's not as good as the numbers have shown, but right. you've won these three games essentially with defense. What have you guys done defensively and how, I guess, proud are you that the, uh, of you are in the defense that they've been able to show up for three games? Yeah, I mean, I, I hate to pat our defense on the back. That's when you let go of the rope. And I think we just have to keep keep on at it and, and uh, a, a few weeks ago when we had the extra day and we had a chance to practice during the regular season before we played the Pacers in Boston the first time I thought we had a really good day of just going back to basics and um, ever since then we've tried to do basics in every single practice we get the chance to practice more now and we're, we're doing them a little bit better um, sometimes those things wane throughout the course of a long regular season when you can't practice um, so it's been good to get back on the court and kind of get those daily vitamins and, and um, you know, be a little bit better as a group. And I think, you know, our first group generally really makes it hard to score and that sets a tone for the game. Brad, uh, John Corrales, MassLive.com, that Kyrie and Al pick and roll that you went to over and over again down the stretch, how good a feeling is it to know that when push comes to shove, you can always just rely on that. And Kyrie can just take the ball so deep into the paint and still give it up and find Al so wide open. Yeah, I mean, they, they really played it well. Listen, the Pacers have given us fits with their pick and roll defense because they switched a ton in the first two games. They blitzed right out of the gate, first play of the game um, against Baines. Miles Turner jumped Kyrie. Um, they mixed in blitzes the rest of the game. They, they did different things, but the bigs didn't switch quite as much. They switched some, but not quite as much. Um, and so then, you know, Al has a chance to play in those 
in those seams and in popping. But you know, that's the, those two are really good players, and so it's it's best thing to do in that moment is keep it simple, figure out what the defense is doing, and react to it. We've seen a lot over the last 85 games about how they react to Al and Kyrie, and um, and then a guard in Kyrie. But Kyrie did; he was. I mean, some of the shots he hit, you know, he had the driving layup, which was a good move, but then the, the little floating shot he hit was just a joke. Um, he's he's ridiculous. Coach, you uh, touched on a little uh, while ago about just not letting go of the rope based on the way you guys have been playing. You have a chance to close this thing out. What's the key to not being comfortable with your status right now as a team? Well, I think one of the things this team should know better than any team maybe I've been on through the regular season is, is each week each week can change how you feel. So like, let's just hit singles and try to win the next game one possession at a time. You're not going to win it in the first quarter. You're not going to win it, you know, in the second. You have to keep doing it over and over, and that's what's hard about the playoffs. And this team is, this 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 Indiana team plays with tremendous character and integrity. Like they they play the game the way the game's supposed to be played. So we know that to win a series against them, you're going to have to beat them in a game. And beating them in a game is a monster. And so we have to be ready to compete at the highest level again and play better than we did tonight. Final question? Brad, what difference did you see out of Jalen Brown tonight, maybe than the first first two games in Boston? Not much. I mean, he only he got, he got nine attempts and he made some, right? So I think that ultimately sometimes we overreact to makes. But he's been great on all three games defensively. Um, and then... Uh, you know, I thought he made the pass of the game the other night, and then today it was his turn to get a few more shots. And, and um, you know, we just have to keep moving it and finding the next right guy. And if that means you get seven open ones one night and none the next, you got to move it till we find the right one. And so that's the encouraging part, not necessarily how many shots go down, but just finding the right ones. Thank you, Thanks. Commanding 3 nothing leading the series for the Seas. Kyrie and company, hot from three. Jalen Brown finds him for one. And then Jalen Brown, who had some big shooting himself, had 12 in the first quarter, including a couple from deep here. That's how deep this roster is, Grant. You go on down the line, three, four, five guys in, and they still have guys like Scary Terry and Jalen who can carry you for But But depth has never been the issue, but I love how they find the hot hand and they ride him for that quarter. First 40-point quarter of the season, the playoffs since 1990. Pacers, though, fight. Well-coached team. They're tough. Don't go away. 17-3 run, B-Wood. Oh, yeah, big-time run. Sparked by Mr. Tyreek Evans. He had a big-time first half, and you see him right here, not known for the three, but still getting it down. Anyway. And confidence. He and Collison almost willed them to a game two win. Uh, will you uh, look at this? It's Kyrie. Bang. Breaks the tie. Three point lead 55 52. But how about uh, Turner to Collison? All right. Normally that's the opposite. Way. Yeah, yeah. Normally, normally it's like Collison a, to Turner, but this time we get. It's like an alley. <laughs> lead two at the break. Tatum. Mm, great pass. Brotherhood. What's that? It's a guy's Some teammates. Guys teammates. Pass them. Guys win. Okay. Uh, Tatum from three. Again, his good lead was seven, 80 to 73. But Indiana again fighting, not going away. No Oladipo, no problem. Bogey Ooh. playing is good. Lead down to four. Then Wesley Matthews from deep. Oh, yeah. He's going to pull out his bow and arrow. Oh, yeah, you already you already know. Anytime Wesley Matthews hits that three, you got that bow and arrow going. Uh, no bow and arrow, but everything else in the Kyrie bag. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, you don't need a bow and arrow when you got all that. <laughs> you good. 19 and 10. Come on, man. Mm. Too, too many tricks. And this was that that's a big time play for Kyrie, because he would have shot that earlier in the season. And right here you see him make the right play, made the pass to Al Horford, got the easy shot. Tough work inside from Gordon Hayward. Finds a way. That was a big shot. Bring it to eight. As once again, it seems like a broken record, but it was constant during the game. Pacers don't go away. They try and fight back. Tyreek Evans at 19. Not enough. Big night from Jalen Brown and company. 3-0 lead for Boston. Here's Nate McMillan.
Hey, Coach, uh, John Herrick, WIBC Radio in Indianapolis. Um, it looked like in the second quarter you guys started to see some momentum uh, back in your favor, but in the third quarter they, they kind of took control into the fourth. What do you think was the difference in the second half? Well, the, the, the first, uh, half, first quarter, I mean, they came out hot. I mean, extremely hot. They was hitting everything. Uh, I thought we had uh, some good contests on a lot of those shots in the um, – um, in the first quarter, uh, uh, second quarter, I thought our second unit came in and was able to start getting some stops. And uh, we got a rhythm and started to score um, in that second quarter. Third quarter, you know, very similar. I thought we lost our patience. We weren't patient in the uh, third quarter. Started taking some quick contested shots, bailing them out, uh, I thought, defensively. Uh, just didn't have patience. Um, in that third quarter, and I thought we, we lost the rhythm, lost momentum. Uh, that really kind of carried out throughout the, throughout the game. Coach John Corrales, MassLive.com. Can you, uh, what did you think of the pick and roll defense down the stretch there when Kyrie and Al were going at it over and over again, especially when it comes to Kyrie's ability to take the ball deep into the paint in those situations? Well, you know, we um, did a number of things. Um, looked at trapping. We looked at switching. You know, he makes the play. Uh, if you trap him, he's going to either uh, try to split it or give it up. And uh, some of those other guys in the first quarter, first half, was was uh, uh, the ben benefiting on the receiving end of of us committing to to the ball. Uh, so you know, he's going to make the read. You know, if you switch, uh, basically he isolate whoever's in front of him. Uh, you know, so, um, you know, he took advantage of uh, what the defense was doing. Um, the guys off the ball, uh, Brown and those guys made us pay uh, when we did commit two to the basketball. You may have just been asked this, but you, you turned Kyrie into a playmaker tonight, and that didn't quite work. Uh, kind of what's plan C? <laughs> You know, I just was uh, speaking on that. Uh, you know, he's, 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 a, he's a great player. He's a playmaker. He's a guy that uh, does a great job of reading uh, the defense. Uh, he's unselfish. Uh, if you're committing to, to the ball, uh, he's giving the ball up. And, uh, you know, those guys uh, were knocking down open shots. You know, he creates opportunities uh, for his teammates uh, as well as for himself. So, um, Kind of got to just pick your poison. I thought we uh, changed our defense a couple of times uh, tonight. Uh, tried to trap to get the ball out of his hands. Uh, we went to switching to try to stay in front of him. And, uh, you know, he pretty much made us pay uh, every mistake that we made. Um. Is it as simple to say when you look at this series that they've they've got Kyrie and you don't, or does it go deeper than that? Well, I mean, they their guys are playing well. It's not just uh, Irvin that's playing well. You know, tonight uh, Brown has a a, a, a big night. Uh, Tatum has a big night. Um, the first game, Morris had a big night. You know, so they have guys that are very capable. Hayward is. Uh, a playmaker over there, uh, you know, so it's not just Irving uh, that they have that is making plays. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a solid team with uh, a lot of uh, ways to attack you. Nate, the math is obviously against teams that are down 0 to 3. What do you kind of do to, to rally the guys going into Sunday's game? game well, four? you know, it, uh, I've, I've been asked, uh, you know, a lot this season, uh, is it a big game? tomorrow. Uh, Sunday is a big game. You know, it's do or die for us. You know, it's, it's just as simple as that. that that's what we consider uh, a big game. All right. Nate McMillan and the Pacers, a large hill to climb. Stopping Kyrie for a quarter, let alone a game, four in a row. We'll talk more about what happened in game three when we come back.